The problem is that doing minute is sustainability, something more than the word. So one of my favorite authors, uh, Randall Monroe, made this uh, comic. Yes, word sustainable is not sustainable. <laughs> if you follow the trend, when uh, you follow the trend, by the year 2,120, uh, 2009, all sentences are just the word sustainable repeated over and over. <laughs> uh, this is an average of how often you find sustainable, the word sustainable in publications. And yeah, it's going up, 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 present day, find it every so often. So, yeah, yeah, so, but is it more? So what is sustainability? Uh, is it's about resources. For us, that's fiber. For us, that's water. There's plenty of water I hear in the Northwest, but I also hear that in California things are not so good. Energy is also something to consider when we talk about sustainability. Sustainability includes human effort. Can we keep pulling that heavy mold year after year? That hurt their tells us how hard it was in the old times and how people would, well, were out being a van. Sustainability is about money, capital, tools, making those kids who don't know what is right or wrong go into student debt so we can have a life where we don't need to face the real world is exploitative, not sustainable. Becoming a paper maker when you have student debt is not sustainable. On the other hand, Depending on capitalism, to be able to afford a life of art and leisure, but then complain about capitalism seems to be very sustainable, as it has been going on for years, seems to be getting stronger by the minute. Makes no sense to me, but if things made sense to me, I would be very rich already. <laughs> Fair wage, paid internships are sustainable. Meals that employ young people that want to learn the art and craft of paper, who then go on to become paper makers or paper artists or full-time paper employees, is a total win-win when compared to a broken system where people start a so-called independent life with a heavy chain of student debt, or worse, where to avoid student debt means that we all have to pay even more taxes. In the apprenticeship model, teaching masters earn their keep by producing useful paper as well as teaching. The youngsters earn their keep and also learn by helping produce something useful. Society gets valuable handmade paper for purchase without having to raise taxes for so-called free education. I believe we should have more of that old model of apprenticeship, improving on it to make it more fair and more open than builds used to be. Sustainability is not an empty word. Have I offended everybody already? <laughs> we all know that being offensive seems to be the way to become a recognized artist, so <laughs> at least I hope you all are well awake. So let me hit you with the technicalities of my innovation. We'll go back to the issues of pulp and water later. I can do pretty much nothing by myself about sustainability of energy, human labor, or of capital's resources, besides calling the attention to them. But when it comes to reducing the needs for water in making paper by hand, it so happens that I can, and I am doing quite a bit. My concept is very simple, as all good ideas should be. The picture, uh, five-year-old handling a mold that is almost bigger than his, and making a perfect piece of paper the very first time in his life. What I call traditional paper making is very needy and very wasteful of water. Very. We need lots of water to float the pulp. Then we discard it during coaching and pressing. If we make our own pulp, we rinse and rinse, and that water is often quite contaminated afterward. Pollution, waste. I mentioned I'll go back to pulp later. Let's address for now, now saving water during seed, uh, sheet forming and cushing and pressing. A lot of what I propose has to do with capturing and recirculating water. That is, I maximize the capture of water, then I save it, then I use it again in the pulper to float more fiber, and so on and so forth. Same water. In the last three months, I've needed tap water only once, all the rest being provided by rainwater, and some of the dirtiest water captured ending up in my compost pile, not in the sewer. The rest goes around and around, also saves in sizing and titanium dioxide. Yes, mine is a very small operation, but where it's bigger, it seems that I could manage with larger rain water storage. In principle, traditional paper making could use some kind of container to catch the water during present time, but that is not efficient or practical, really. 
you got to catch that water earlier in the cycle. One of the advantages is that where of my system is that when pressing is essentially a, a dry operation. And like uh, Malakai Monsi, a colleague uh, in Texas, said to me when he saw my rig, now we can make paper and carpeted floors. I don't recommend it, but, but <laughs> tomorrow you will see. It's, it's sort of surprising. The following drawings are part of uh, my patent application, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office Provisional Patent 62361439. That does not mean that I claim as my invention everything that is in these drawings. Most of it is necessary for background. But some of what is shown here is real innovation that were worth the enormous trouble of making the patent application. So what we have here is a view of my vacuum table. Here's a good view. Pretty obvious, uh, you can see how the working area that will be number 114 um, is on top of a seal box that then has air pulled out of it through a pipe 108. Now something quite in important in my system is that you can flip the table up. Here is something that I am quite happy with. Um, it's the valve to capture the remnants of uh, pulp that are on the edges of the frame of the mold. And then, of course, this is uh, just a schematic drawing. You have your uh, pump 127, you have your water 128. And uh, I thank uh, Lander for the idea of having some kind of a faucet to be able to take the water out 129. So, as I mentioned, not all my ideas. So how it works? Well, you form and drain into that, as we all do. Then you go to place on, uh, your mold into vacuum box. Now, in these examples, I'm using molds that have no reinforcement under the um, mesh. Uh, but there are ways to work with those that uh, do have that. Then you vacuum. Uh, you remove the deco. One big advantage there is you have absolutely no Batman tears if you don't want them. And then you lift the vacuum box, that way anything that was on the edges of the mold drains, you remove the mold, turn it upside down, blot, pile uh, in your post, and press. And this is a view of the post. Uh, as I use it, I use, uh, uh, in Austin, I use uh, sheets of acrylic, and found, I found something much cheaper, and um, you'll see it tomorrow. So this is another concept, sort of similar. This is a box where you actually feel water and can float. It's more uh, like the Nepali method. And then this is the method to use when you have uh, reinforcements in the back. Uh, you transfer and uh, or if you're doing um, chiaroscuro watermarks or if you have a smaller mold. Uh, there are different alternatives that I have been working on. So now the practicals of saving water into manufacture of paper by hand at tiny expense. So my whole rig is something like ninety dollars plus the shop back or inconveniences are a good thing. But the, my main message, what I really feel that I must share with you all, is not something that will make us happy as continuing doing what we have been doing. When I present at Maker Faires and that sort of events, I have this little spiel that starts with me saying that paper making has a well-deserved bad reputation from an environmental point of view. I guess most of us would agree that that's the reputation that paper making has. Paper making, paper mills, stench, polluted rivers, right. Well, today the reputation of paper and pulp is certainly not as bad as that of hunting large mammals. But many people will agree too fast and without thinking with the same meme that paper making is bad because it kills trees. My grandma had a piano where the keys were covered with ivory. That was real ivory. There was a time when that was okay. Now it is no longer okay. It is still legal to kill elephants. That elephant was killed legally. Or whales, believe it or not. But it is not something that most of us will say is okay. Except for science. Science can get away with murder or in murdering whales, but let's not go there. My point here is that the times, they are changing. And he got the uh, Nobel Prize, you know? <laughs> I stand here to say that making pulp out of plants as we used to know it is pretty much over. Not that it's wrong, 
or illegal or immoral or inappropriate. Just that we, what I want to share is that we have to change our attitude. And as you have heard somewhere, once we change our attitude, everything changes. First thing, this picture is not of an ecological disaster. Yes, paper mill towns used to be stinky, the rivers dead, those who lived there were prone to certain rather painful and uh, miserable ways to die, but that is no longer the case, at least in our country, or countries that our companies buy pulp from. Despite ignorant protests, for example, pulp manufacturing in Uruguay, my country also, yeah, you know, is probably more sustainable than anywhere else, as the country had pretty much zero trees until massive eucalyptus plantations were established, a tree that grows fast and grows back from the stump once it has been cut. I know, we used to have 700 trees in our farm, and when I use Georgia Pacific paper products, I like to think that maybe some of my trees from that, for what was a very happy time in my life, are making it back to me in a way. <laughs> what about dumping chemicals? First, those chemicals are expensive. A mill that dumps its chemicals has to buy them all over again. It makes economic sense to capture and reuse chemicals, and they do. Same thing with water. Yes, paper mills use huge amounts of water. That is why mills are pretty much always located next to a river or a lake. Then they reuse that water because water is expensive. And dumping of waste water controlled. Reusing the water also makes it easier to recapture the chemicals. Then, of course, strong regulations and lots of public awareness make a difference. I'm sure that some mills try to get rid of waste beyond reusing. And perhaps a few even succeed, but no longer do we have the disastrous situation of the 30s, 50s, or even the 70s when it comes to pollution caused by the paper and pulp industry. Industrial paper, pound for pound, and this is my opinion, and I am open to have somebody show me that I'm wrong, does not contaminate as much as an amateur with a boiler and some soda ash. Doesn't waste that much water either. I am talking here pound per pound. So we say that killing trees to make paper is bad, and because of that we will kill grasses and bushes, and so to make our own pulp, where is the logic there? Yes, I will say with all conviction that all life is sacred, but I don't quite count trees there. Unborn babies? Surely. That's life that deserves protection. Kittens? Sure. Baby seals? Of course. But trees? And somehow is it logical that killing grasses or, polluting, uh, or pulling branches is okay, but killing trees is not okay? Or is it because grass and branches grow back and fast? You know that trees also grow pretty fast, and some, like eucalyptus, right from the stump. Others need to be planted, but the trees are not something dead forever, especially in our capitalistic system. It is good business to plant and own trees. It improves the value of the land. The reasoning that maybe making paper out of plant is environmental, okay, or at least better than using industrial pulp, is simply not true. The industrial paper making um, um, is killing trees and causing loss of forest, not so evident, certainly not a clear fact. The facts are precisely because of higher consumption. More trees are getting planted, especially in our country. America is capitalism, business, prosperity, and while we, are a, we have a pretty good share of the worst slime bags in the world, as a system, I must say, as the worst economic system, which happens to work better than any other system ever tried, we know that profit needs investment, and investment in the paper and pulp industry means planting trees. They don't do it so much for the principle, they do it for the money. And it results in more trees than we have had in a while. Uh, you are probably familiar with the statistics, we have more trees now than we had 100 years ago, yes, well, okay, so there was a lot of cutting happening one, uh, before 100 years ago, but we're catching up. The real problem is not trees versus grasses or hemp. Now, if you say, if you go and say that you are making paper out of this part for the fun of it, you might find it interesting. But then, it's a free country. Go for it. But if you go and say that you are making paper out of this part to save trees, I just don't see it. Same if you use all clothing and rags with harsh chemicals and lots and lots and lots of rinsing. The real problem here is in what we call the environmental footprint. And the return on investment regarding limited resources like water and the environmental impact. For certain fibers, let's say Gampi, thank you for somebody who reminded about me about this last night, you don't really need harsh chemicals and you use little water. I say more power to you. If you figure out a way that per pound you use less water and dump less harsh chemicals in the environment than water, pulp meal 
dose or factory dose per pound, then you're my new hero. I want to learn all about you, and I will support you with all my enthusiasm and energy and conviction. That, as you can see, I have a lot of. I mean it. Now, if per pound you are polluting more, using more water, wasting more water than a modern pulp mill, I sincerely ask you, as respectfully as I can, but as strongly as I can, looking at you right in the eye, I say, please, 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 stop. Quit messing with my pachamam, with my hair, with this planet of mine, that is yours also, but that we have to care for together, that we have a duty. Let's quit pretending that making one own pulp is to save trees. It ain't true. One more tree is plant some. Harvest them responsibly. Get your pulp from responsible sources. Pound per pound, the environmental impact of the cotton linters pulp from Cheney pulp is much less than if I were to try to make my own out of blue jeans. As far as I can see, if, 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 if we care about sustainability, paper makers that make their own pulp is something of the past, like the Raj, the Empire, like Downton Abbey, like four coats, something that we can look at with some sense of the past, maybe of a romantic air, a silly, a somewhat ignorant ear, the memory of something that is no longer okay. Now, someone may say, as I have heard it, I, I actually have read it, that it's not so bad because we make so little, us makers of paper by hand are less than a blip of the use of resources that a big paper mill uses. And thus it doesn't matter if I run four hollanders and that water gets dumped later and to avoid having my pulp ferment, I empty my 40 gallon bag every couple of days. That's nothing compared to the thousands of gallons any paper mill uses every day, some every hour. Some will say that such a big environmental crime is bad, that of pulp and paper mills. But a little, just a teensy, itty bitty one. That is OK even if pound per pound it is not as, at all as efficient. I was born in Bolivia. I should assure you that's not my fault, I wasn't consulted. But it so happens that we have issues with water over there. As a kid, I have been there by the water truck to wait for water, which is what kids can do as a useful thing for the family, make sure no one takes your place or steals your buckets. They still do it in Bolivia. Many of these pictures are from Bolivia. They do it in Africa, they do it in Asia. Yes, kids and grown-ups still wait in Bolivia for the water drug today, or have to share the one faucet for hundreds of people if they have at least that, and will no doubt keep doing it thanks to corrupt governments with better ways to waste money than providing services. And a population that I cannot really blame them doesn't want to pay taxes or pay for water. Water is a human right, they say. Problem is water ain't free. If we feel that we can get away with wasting water because we have better plumbing here, tell that to Mono Lake in California. Tell that to people all over the world where women have to walk miles to carry a jar with muddy water. No, can't do that, can we? We don't want to be ugly Americans, and I agree. Can we pretend that because we're saving trees, we make pulp in a process that is embarrassingly wasteful of water? In the face of real water shortage, real pain in the peoples of this earth. Now, I would be a dull hypocrite if I said that I always try to say well, so where that I am, yeah, of the have-nots of the world. If that were the case, I would wash away a learn in Indonesia with a little half word, using like in your forehead and you push it up, using less, maybe, maybe up to half a gallon, or even less, and not every day. And I wouldn't have gone to Indonesia by plane, of course, of what a waste of fuel. I'm an American. I take a nice shower every day, if I remember. Taking a shower a couple of days ago, I was thinking that I want, that if I am so careful about my water when making paper, but really, every time that I have a shower, I use more water than I use in a week of making paper, because I reuse my, my paper water. So it would be thought. I have no stand to judge anyone. I don't own the truth. I said it before, if you can figure out the process to make pulp that is not a small, tiny, but real environment disaster, let's spread that knowledge. I will be with you. Because the way that making pulp from plants is being presented to a gullible and ignorant public is just not right and not true. 
It used to be okay, because we didn't know, because we didn't understand how we are supposed to think globally and act locally. And we actually thought that we were losing trees to industrial paper making. That is not the case, quite the contrary. If we're making pulp as an elaborate practical joke, it's not a very good joke. Now, do I want all small-scale pulp making to stop? That is very much not my intention. Just like it is sort of okay to do some gilding work using mercury, maybe some of you know the process, ceramics and gobe using manganese dioxide, solar prints with bicarbonate of potassium. I guess that it is okay to make some small scale pulp out of some fiber that you have. Sure, art. I believe it's okay, and I mean it. As long as we don't even pretend that doing that is to save trees or the planet, because it ain't. Be aware of our karma. Plant a few trees from time to time. That helps. We can make pulp respectfully. Aware of our environment, our impact, footprint. We do it carefully, responsibly. We enjoy the fact that we can do mature adult things in a mature adult way. Somewhat like having some alcohol from time to time. Not good if you do a lot, but okay if we know what we're doing and the consequences, and we're not pregnant and we're not driving. Just like fishing is okay, just like eating a hamburger doesn't necessarily mean that you are a bloodthirsty assassin accomplice. Let's be aware of what sustainability means. Let's save water, energy. Let's save the pride and worth of man and woman as they labor honestly. Let's share our knowledge, make our footprint on this earth be a gentle one. I am not here to condemn anyone. I am here to do my part to make things be better, or at least a little bit less worse, as we walk the talk of sustainability together. Thank you very much.